In 1951, the cinematic landscape witnessed the release of Quo Vadis, a historical epic that left an indelible mark on audiences. The film, directed by Mervyn Leroy, unfolds against the backdrop of ancient Rome, portraying a tale of love, power, and the clash between religious conviction and imperial might. As you revisit this classic, one might wonder, is there a particular scene or moment that has etched itself into the fabric of your memory? Beyond its grandeur, Quo Vadis invites reflection on the timeless themes it explores. The narrative weaves through the lives of its characters, capturing the tension between the opulence of Roman society and the burgeoning influence of Christianity. Against this backdrop, the film prompts viewers to ponder the enduring struggles between tradition and change, a resonance that continues to captivate audiences. As you revisit this cinematic gem, we're curious, is there a scene or moment that has had a lasting impact on you? Moreover, what is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Quo Vadis? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's delve into some intriguing facts about the film. Did you know that Quo Vadis was based on the 1896 novel by Henrik Sienkiewicz, which, in turn, drew inspiration from the decadence and religious upheaval of ancient Rome? The movie's production boasted impressive sets and a large cast, creating a visual spectacle that contributed to its success. As we explore the nuances of Quo Vadis, let the allure of its narrative draw you in. What unfolds is not just a cinematic journey, but an exploration of human complexities set against the grandeur of history. So, share your thoughts, your favorite scenes, and your personal connections to this cinematic masterpiece. We eagerly await your stories and memories in the comments below. Let the dialogue begin. Quo Vadis, released in 1951 and directed by Mervyn Leroy, is an epic historical drama set in ancient Rome during the reign of Emperor Nero. Adapted from Henrik Sienkiewicz's Nobel Prize-winning novel, the film follows the tumultuous romance between a Roman military commander, Marcus Vinicius, and a Christian woman, Lyja, against the backdrop of Nero's oppressive rule and the growing influence of Christianity. The narrative weaves together political intrigue, religious conflict, and personal struggles, culminating in the iconic burning of Rome and the persecution of Christians. The film's enduring appeal lies in its lavish production design, opulent costumes, and stellar performances by Robert Taylor as Vinicius, Deborah Kerr as Lyja, and Peter Ustinov as the whimsical Emperor Nero. Quo Vadis stands out for its grandiose scale, capturing the spectacle of ancient Rome with breathtaking visuals. This cinematic masterpiece had a significant impact on popular culture, influencing subsequent historical epics, and leaving an indelible mark on the portrayal of ancient Rome in film. Its legacy endures as a classic example of Hollywood's golden era, a testament to the enduring allure of historical drama, and a cultural touchstone in the realm of cinematic storytelling. Originally slated with a different cast, Quo Vadis underwent a significant change in 1949. Dame Elizabeth Taylor and Gregory Peck were initially set to portray Lyja and Marcus Vinicius, respectively. However, when the production changed hands the following year, the roles were recast with Deborah Kerr stepping into the role of Lyja and Robert Taylor as Marcus Vinicius. This shift marked a crucial juncture in the film's development, altering the trajectory of its lead characters. The behind-the-scenes dynamics of Quo Vadis also involved notable decisions by actors. Clark Gable, a prominent figure of that era, declined the role of Marcus Vinicius due to concerns about the costume's potential to make him appear ridiculous. This decision, although a missed opportunity for Gable, contributed to the eventual casting of Robert Taylor, who delivered a memorable performance in the film. Beyond the casting choices, Quo Vadis is distinguished by its massive production scale. The movie utilized a staggering 32,000 costumes, underscoring the commitment to authenticity and detail in recreating the ancient Roman setting. This extensive wardrobe played a pivotal role in bringing the grandiose spectacle of ancient Rome to life on the silver screen. In summary, Quo Vadis, beyond its cinematic impact, bears the marks of a production marked by casting shifts and the meticulous recreation of historical detail through an extensive array of costumes. These factors, intricately woven into the film's narrative, contribute to its enduring legacy as a classic from Hollywood's golden era. With over 30,000 extras contributing to its grandeur, 
The 1951 movie Quo Vadis stands as a cinematic spectacle of ancient Rome. The film's meticulous attention to historical detail is evident in its staggering use of costumes, emphasizing authenticity, and bringing the ancient setting to life on the silver screen. Beyond the visual spectacle, Quo Vadis weaves a narrative of political intrigue, religious conflict, and personal struggles against the backdrop of Emperor Nero's oppressive rule. The casting shifts, including Deborah Kerr and Robert Taylor taking on lead roles originally slated for Elizabeth Taylor and Gregory Peck, mark crucial turning points in the film's development. Clark Gable's decline of the role due to costume concerns paved the way for Taylor's memorable performance. Despite a happy ending in the film, the subsequent short-lived disaster of Nero's successor, Galba, adds a layer of historical context to Quo Vadis. This classic from Hollywood's golden era endures as a testament to the meticulous recreation of history and the impact of casting decisions, leaving an indelible mark on cinematic storytelling. Sir Peter Ustinov's journey to securing the role of Emperor Nero in the 1951 movie Quo Vadis was a tale of studio hesitation and historical accuracy. In his memoirs, Dear Me, Ustinov revealed NGM's initial reluctance, questioning his age suitability for the notorious Roman Emperor. The studio's meticulous telegrams and Ustinov's witty retort about Nero's historical age and death eventually clinched the part for him. Coincidentally, Ustinov was 30 years old when the film hit the screens. Ustinov's casting wasn't the only meticulous aspect of Quo Vadis. Composer Mikhail Zarza dedicated himself to authenticity, intertwining ancient Greek melodies into his score. This effort added a layer of historical resonance to the film's music, enhancing the overall cinematic experience. While Ustinov and Arza contributed significantly to Quo Vadis, it's interesting to note that Sergio Leone's early work as an assistant on the film marked his initial collaboration with Americans. Despite not meeting the director or principal actors, this opportunity paved the way for Leone's later impact on the Western genre. These behind-the-scenes glimpses shed light on the dedication to historical accuracy and the collaborative efforts that shaped the 1951 cinematic spectacle, Quo Vadis. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the corridors of time, let the echoes of Quo Vadis linger in the tapestry of your thoughts. Allow the grandeur of 1,951 seconds cinematic masterpiece to reverberate within the chambers of your memories. As you contemplate the intertwining threads of love, ambition, and destiny that weave through the narrative, consider the resonance it holds in the tapestry of your own experiences. Quo Vadis is not merely a film, it is a portal to introspection, a doorway to a bygone era that beckons you to reflect on the parallels with your own narrative. The characters, the spectacle, the drumage frame is a mirror reflecting the hues of your own journey. How does the epic clash of civilizations and the poignant romance embedded in the narrative resonate with the chapters of your life? In the quiet moments, as the credits roll and the echoes of Nero's Rome fade, invite your thoughts to dance with the shadows of Quo Vadis. Was it the gripping storyline, the stellar performances, or perhaps the timeless themes that left an indelible mark on your soul? Share with us your reflections, your favorite scenes, or the lines that linger like whispered secrets in the corridors of your memory. This isn't just a farewell to a cinematic gem, it's an invitation to celebrate the shared tapestry of our human experience. Join the chorus of voices who have found solace, inspiration, or sheer delight in the world painted by Quo Vadis. Your thoughts are the brushstrokes that complete the masterpiece. Thank you for embarking on this journey through time and celluloid with us. Your time and reflections are treasures, enriching the collective experience of all who have shared in this exploration. Until we meet again in the realms of another cinematic odyssey, let the spirit of Quo Vadis resonate in your thoughts and dreams. Crafted with cinematic affection and human introspection, 